Ah, my. That song was called Cornwall, and it was written by this man that we just opened up on. Welcome to the Robert Ford Show. We're talking about the Appalachian dulcimer and journeys at this point of, of this blog uh, of myself through the uh, late 60s, early 70s. We're in 1971. We're in Union Grove, North Carolina. I have just uh, been told that there is some other dulcimer player in this crowd of 40,000 people and uh, that he was down over the hill. Now, the events leading up to this is that I started playing Wildwood Flower at all these different bluegrass ensembles. I discovered this man there named Jerry Beal. Jerry Beal had come down from Newark, he called it Nark, Ohio, and Jerry was an instrument builder and he built these beautiful, small, exquisite, uh, finely tuned, balanced uh, instruments, the uh, dulcimers. And he had nine or ten of them down there. And ha, finally, my, my trip to the Sigma Nu uh, fraternity house had paid off, and there was a man with dulcimers. Trouble was, he wasn't a player. But what he really did like is I liked his instruments so much, I mean, I'd gone there to find dulcimers, and those were the first dulcimers I found, that I picked them up and started playing them, and dee 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 and uh, people said, whoa, that's really nice, and they started buying his instruments. He liked that a lot. And uh, the next day, it was a three-day festival, the next day I decided I needed to go up onto the stage and uh, get uh, my ten dollars back by playing on stage. That's what they did back in those days. And remember, ten dollars uh, bought you a lot of gas for that pink 54 Lincoln Capri, uh, 18 cents a gallon it was back then. And so I got up and, of course, you know what song I played, Wildwood Flower, and I did what I thought was a, a credible rendition. I got a little polite applause, and got off the stage, got my ten bucks, and I was all set. And I went back to Jerry Beale's booth, and Jerry said, well, you know, there was another guy I heard about on earlier, and uh, he's playing the dulcimer, too. I said, really? A player? Where is he? And he said, well, I don't know. Remember, we're in a crowd of 40,000 people. He says, well, I... They said he was uh, camped off in some place, you know, down over there. So, put my dulcimer, didn't have to do that quite the way, but, or on the side. Here I am like, okay, I'm ready, let's go find another live dulcimer player, dun da 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 And off I went. And down there at the bottom of the hill, a little campground next to his little car he called Bessie the Bouncing Bluebird, an old 63 Buick uh, convertible. Uh, was Albert Conrad Kempton Dashe, and he was a man who was to change my life. He was a man who, his sense of music, he was born in New Orleans. He grew up, he grew up in New Orleans with the person sitting next to him on the piano stool was uh, Sweet Emma Barrett, the bell gal. You know, so the jazz and, and, and the music of New Orleans was in his blood. And he had grown up in, in, uh, in, in we used to call ourselves, I was not quite the boy next door. Uh, I grew up in the logging business and in farming and running big machines and stuff like that, uh, working with my father. And he was quite not the boy in the big house. Grew up in Washington, D.C., but had gone to a series of prep schools and finally had just graduated from, from Chapel Hill in North Carolina. And... Uh, Together, you know, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, we were actually the first adulterer players that either one of us had seen. And he played a very interesting style. He had his instrument down on his lap, and he used just one finger. And he went, and he played back and forth like this with his uh, finger. And he said that was a sitar technique that he had learned. So he would play back and forth like this, and... Uh, and he, and he, he could just he could make it make it happen anyway, and then he heard what I was doing standing up, you know, doing you know.